here to Fergus Falls, Minnesota. I played football at the M State College, and I went out to South Dakota University of Sioux Falls, out in South Dakota, and I got a scholarship there from um, M State playing football, and I was there the last um, five years after graduating from M State, and I moved back here in 2020. So this is where I'm now, and I made a family here, and I'm here for. Um, the long, the long haul, so. <laughs> yeah, so, um, I'm gonna be talking about um, Polynesian art, and first off, I'm gonna be talking about this. This right here is called a Ia Lava Lava in the islands. Um, we primarily, uh, male and females, we wear this a lot, just because of the 85 degree weather, and you know, sunny and hot, humid all year round. So for like us, daily use, um, you know, we just wrap it around us, just like this, and then the females also have different variations of how um, they tie it and wear it, but for us, the males, um, we typically just wear it like this. Um, we call it Sulu, which is um, just like wearing it or putting it on, and basically, this is how it's worn all throughout the years, and we just walk around, you know, um, the islands just like this. But when during the special events like funerals, church um, services, and um, graduation, there's an actual like a proper one which is stitched, you know, well, nice and knitted. And so that's what you know we wear with a button-up T-shirt. Um, and yeah, uh, I don't think I have any pictures up here of it, but um, I got a bunch of pictures up here you could later um, just you know take a look at. And if you have any questions. Um, I'll be happy, you know, um, answer for you guys. So I'm going to start with um, showing the male tattoo in our culture, which is called. Um, there's a lot of different names for it, but the name um, that is uh, called is called a beta, and um, the other term for it is called somai miki. And this traditional tattoo has been with our culture since 2,000 plus years ago. And um, it originated from the Tongans, who are also on the same Polynesian islands um, where American Samoa and Western Samoa is. And um, so, yeah, this tattoo um, signifies the ready for the male in the Samoan um, tradition to be adulthood and to live the Fa Samoa way in our culture. Um, basically, just knowing how to talk and host events, you know, when funerals and stuff happens. And usually there's a chief of the village. A lot of um, Samoa is uh, separated. Here in the US we have towns and counties. Back on the islands we have villages. So our villages, I, I, I don't know the exact number of how many villages are there, but there's a lot of villages in the island of Samoa. And every village has a makai or a chief. And so those, um, high chiefs are basically the ones who talk about what needs to be done in the village, you know, and what they could do to help the community grow and um, be able to do things together. So on this picture right here, I have two um, Samoan uh, male um, wearing uh, the Somai Miki, the Be'a, and this tattoo takes up to two weeks and anywhere from six to 10 hours a day, depending on how long the person can handle it. And usually there's about five, five to six people doing the tattoo at one time because um, it's very brutal and it's just hard and it's all done by hand. And um, another thing is too, you have to have a partner to do the tattoo with because you might not be able to go through it alone just because of how tough it is. and you might end up dying. So just because of how just hard it is and you know how long it takes on your body. So usually you have to have you know somebody with you that's gonna be doing it with you so that they can support you through it all. And your village usually comes and basically is there with you throughout the entire process, singing and um, bringing gifts, you know, just to keep the morale up for those who are getting the tattoo. And after that, after you get the tattoo, you know, it takes about two weeks. Um, the skin's gotta take anywhere from 
two to three weeks to heal because you know it's being stretched and being tattooed on certain parts of the body that you know it'll last for a long time and yeah so that's the tattoo for the Polynesian males and it's for, it starts from the top and then it goes all the way down right above your knees and um, this is the back shot of it what it looks like and then this is the front side and on here is all the different um, s s uh, symbols of the tattoo of the bit up and yeah so I'm going to be talking about the females. So the females, theirs is called the Malu. And so theirs usually take anywhere from one to two weeks as well. And not as long as the male tattoos. Some females could do theirs in a day if they wanted to, just depending on the person's um, pain tolerance. And after that, basically the female is ready to take up um, also huge um, duties within the villages and in, into the Samoan tradition and families. But the chiefs of the village will always be the ones basically in charge and able to talk about just what needs to be done, you know, in our Samoan Polynesian uh, culture and traditions. I also added on here the different Polynesians um, that also do and uses tattoo as symbols and these are New Zealands. They're from uh, they're from New Zealand, and they are Maorians, and they also do uh, tattoos just like ours. But theirs is called Tamoko, and then the Moko. Um, in the recent years, they have changed the names of um, the Moko tattoos because a lot of um, non um, non Maorians, you know, people from outside of the country, would come and basically get the tattoo because it looks cool and the people from the islands and the, the culture didn't like that very much so they kind of split it into two within the last couple years basically they're gonna give the moko to the original people from the islands and then they're giving the kiritui the, the moko to the New Zealand people who are non-islanders if that makes sense and so Different, and they still today they have schools in New Zealand and you know throughout the Polynesian islands that teaches the culture and basically our way of life and our way of um, raising you know people within our culture. So in our culture, family and God is very important to us, and also um, our just the Samoan la uh, language and the way of living. Um, we treat each other with respect and just how we want to be treated. We are very nice and humble people and we um we treat everybody respectfully and yeah so that is my presentation today just talking about polynesian art and just a little bit of you know my background and where i came from but since i moved here to the u.s i kind of been americanized in a sense just because i lived in america for you know half of my life and um you know i still go back to a lot of this stuff you know to this day, just, you know, where I come from and what I remember, you know, my upbringing be. And um, so, yeah, um, that is, you know, the art, one of the arts that we have in our culture and one of the um, prominent ones, um, I'm sure, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Polynesian or Samoans, but Hawaii, if you guys heard of Hawaii, it's, that's like the most simplest and easiest way for me to like tell people, hey, if they have never heard of Polynesia or Polynesian before, I'll just say, you know what Hawaii is? And people are like, yeah. And I'll say, yeah, Hawaii, you know, we're, they're also Polynesian and, you know, we're all kind of the same descent, you know, from different islands along um, the Polynesian, you know, people. And so, um, yeah. So do you guys have any questions? Yeah, go ahead. In the back, sorry. <laughs> so, um, typically, Yeah, so like, um, it's a pretty high percentage. If you live in Taiwan and you are living in the way of living, in the Fasamo way, a lot of the male is going to get this tattoo. So I'd say 
90%, you know, if you're living in the Pasamo way, you're going to get the tattoo just because it's tradition and, you know, you're just following ancestry footsteps within the family. A lot of my family members have it. Um, I don't have it just because um, I don't think I have. I mean, I, I think I do, but I haven't put myself through that position where, you know, if I were to get it, I don't think I have the strength to, you know, to carry through with it. Cause it's, it's, it's pretty brutal. You know what I mean? And, um, uh, yeah. So, um, for the females, um, I would say that a lot of, a lot of the females who also live in the Fasamo way, basically the Samoan way of living will get the tattoo as well through, throughout, you know, their upbringing as they grow older, because a lot of them want to follow the footsteps of, you know, their families and where they came from. Thank you. Yeah, and then do you have a question? Yes, I was wondering, do they still do like manual tattooing or do they use like machines? Oh yeah, 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 for sure. So like today, a lot of them still do the, you know, the tattoo machine just because it's simple, but that's just for like the basic tribal tattoo that um, a lot of people wear today. Like Darak, for instance, he's one that, um, where he has a lot of his are, all done by the, the mechanical, you know, machine stuff. And then Jason Momoa, I don't know if you guys are familiar with him, but he does also got a lot of his tattoos. He has the moko as well. And he his was done by hand and by, you know, tools that was used from the beginning. And they still practice that, you know, traditions today. But a lot of the tattoos, you know, the tribal that we see today is all done by machines, you know, and just the electrical stuff, yes. Go ahead. What are those um, songs? You said the village comes to support the people who get yeah. the tattoos. What are some of the songs? What do the songs represent? Is it just like um, camaraderie? Like you keep going, or what? What kind of things are said in the songs right. for the people? Yep. A lot of the songs are, um, you know, basically it, it'll be like Samoan songs and um, like church songs, uplifting songs, basically to help you uh, make it through your journey because. Going through this process, it's a journey, and it's um, the villages will host the ceremony the entire two weeks that it's done. You know, it's not just like, oh, you're gonna come here and get this uh, traditional tattoo, and then you're done for the day. It's basically the whole village rallying around those people because it's a respectful thing for uh, the Samoan culture to see that we have Samoan people, so the people of Samoa, willing, you know, to go through this journey. Um, to get this uh, tattoo, this form of art. So um, songs are usually uplifting songs. A lot of it is church songs. So, yeah. So, Go ahead. Do, for the men, is yep. it all the same tattoo or is it slightly different depending on the village or the, the family? Yep. Um, the tattoo is the same. This has been the same tattoo from the beginning um, and nothing changes. So the tattoo is the same tattoo that every single person has. Yeah. And the person that gives the tattoo, usually they get a blessing from um, the chief or you know, the, the village, up. Yep, the higher up. And uh, they have gone through training as well, uh, basically um, living in the Samoan way and the traditions and learning the history about it so that they can able to perform the tattoo the proper way that it needs to be done. And so yeah, so like the females and the males, these are they're going to be the same tattoos, you know, for everybody. Anybody that gets the malu or the bea is going to be the same exact, you know, on their bodies. If that makes sense. Go ahead. So um, as you look at the artist who did this tattoo, did that get carried on? I mean, it, did, do you see somebody who's eight years old and you go, oh, you know? Right. Um, sort of, but basically, um, how it happens is, if the family of that person um, doing the tattoo, they gotta find passion, you know, and willing to learn the art and the traditions and history, and wanna continue that, you know, legacy going on for all the Samoan people and the Samoan tradition. That's what I was wondering because it, is it a dying art? Like, is it? Is it are there new generations that are going to continue this? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know? It'll always like continue, and it, it's not even going away anytime soon. Um, a lot of kids I grew up 
and went to high school with um, just two weeks ago. They put theirs on, you know, Facebook that they had finally gotten theirs, you know, and they're all 28, 27 year olds, you know. And um, so it's something that we take pride and um, we love in our tradition, you know, and it's something that uh, a lot of the Samoan people um, carry on throughout their way of living, you know, because we do have a lot of Polynesian and Samoan people living here in the U.S. And they still, even li while living in the U.S., they still live in the Samoan traditional ways, you know, just a lot of, you know, just different um, environment. So, but a lot of the stuff will always, you know, carry on through and still continue. I don't see it going away anytime soon or ever, in my opinion. Do you see your village still support you? They don't like look down on you because you chose not to get that? They support you in another way or how do you? Yeah, for sure. Um, like w the village I'm from uh, is Kakuma in American Samoa. And so a lot of the like, kids I grew up with, basically um, you could live there your whole life and you know go through all the Samoan traditional ways. But um, I'll, I'll, it's a lot of poverty there. So um, one of the ways that like kids my generation, you know, I learned at a young age that if I want to be successful and be able to do things I want, like you know, the ticket was to move to the mainland, you know, and that's here in the lower forty-eight or anywhere off the islands, just you know, to be successful. But um, we'll still have our you know houses and stuff back in American Samoa. We can always fall back to it if need to be. But um. A lot of, there could be a little bit, you know, where, where so they're the elders exactly, or where yes. they, they think that, oh, you know, now that, you know, I live in America, I kind of strayed away from, you know, a lot of my cultural yeah. stuff, but, um, you know, I still carry it through me and, you know, just being respectful with everybody, you know, walks of life here in the U.S., you know, just to uh, keep everybody, you know, like, happy and, you know, just, keep myself to myself, you know, and if somebody wants to learn, I'll, I'll teach them and talk to them about it, yeah. Go ahead. Yep, you're right. So um, that's another thing too, like, there is no really age limit, and um, usually like, when they are ready to take on that role and, you know, go through that journey of um, learning all the, traditional and the proper way of the Samoan way of life, then they could do it. Um, the youngest I know that's ever done it was like 20, 22, you know, so that's pretty young still, but basically they have matured from an early age and learning all the traditional stuff, um, you know, from his grandparents to his parents, all the way, you know, down the line. And basically he told himself that, uh, not told himself, but he, feels like he has confidence in himself that he's ready to take on that next um, chapter in his life. So, yeah. And in the Samoan um, tradition, like family is huge and God is always first, but um, family is one thing that we take uh, pride and um, we care and love for. And um, so we always um, do stuff with family. So. The typical household in American Samoa or in Samoa, the, the islands in general, they have 10, 10 to, you know, 15 people in a household and, you know, like three bedroom house, you know, two bathrooms, whatever. Everybody just basically lived together and up until the parents pass away. So I know in America, the, at 18, the children, you know, the kids get to go on and live their life, you know, they're adult now. But in American Samoa, it's kind of different. Um, as your parents um, get older, they kind of, some retire or kind of just do just household stuff while the kid, they raise the kids. And once the kids are done with school, they can either choose to go work or, you know, move somewhere so that they can, um, you know, find a way of living for themselves. But a lot of them will stay and help raise their parents until they die you know, in our tradition. So um, you'll see a lot of Polynesian back on the islands, they live with each other up until, you know, the parents are passed away. Any more questions? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Wanda, so you talk about God and what kind of, like, is the, is the Christian God 
the main focus there? Are there historical gods or yep, yep. Um, Christianity, Christianity is the primary religion there, but there's a lot of Catholics and um, Christianity Catholics and um, Latter day Saints, I believe. Um, you know, back in the 70s when the Europeans came over to fight and take over the country, they brought a lot of that stuff over. But in the Samoan tradition, we had our own. Um, way of like beliefs and so we didn't accept like the Europeans bringing on their culture and their way of beliefs and so there was a huge power struggle with that you know and that's why a lot of the wars have happened and um, that's why there was two Samoas because the Europeans were able to overtake one of the Samoan islands which was American Samoa and Western Samoa is still not part of the US because they were able to still keep the seal of the Samoan way of living and, you know, the Samoan culture and tradition so that um, it won't be, you know, um, taken over by, or, you know, taken over or run down by, you know, people from different countries. I do have a question yeah, about, um, so you talked about the tools, but I was wondering yeah. if there's anything in particular that's special about the ink that they use? Yeah, so like um, the ink also is very special. It's from the plants, and um, it's from the plants and the charcoal from uh, this plant that we have in Samoa. So a lot of that stuff is taken from there, and they go through a process of being able to um, extract, some, you know, the plants and keeping it dry, and then they will mix and make the the ink for the tattoo. So basically. Um, the stuff that is thrown from the ground and from the land, we're gonna give back and put it into the bodies of those who are, you know, basically they're gonna die with the land that they were born on, you know, on them for the forever. Wow. So yeah, good question. <laughs> Any more questions? How about a dance demonstration? Yeah, um, so right now I'm gonna be performing the haka. Haka is one of, um, it's a war cry or a song, uh, oh, excuse me, sorry, a uh, war cry or war challenge, songs that um, our people used to do before we go into battle. And um, basically we're trying to intimidate and put fear into our opponents so that, you know, we can able to fight and when you know because there was a lot of um fights you know wars between our people and you know the europeans just trying to make sure we keep our land the way they were you know and able to um yeah keep our land and able to keep our territory so yeah um so the one that i'll be doing is the samoan haka um you know, it's been brother? a while since i've done it so give me no, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna do a little bit of it and uh, just do a demonstration for you guys. Is your brother gonna join you? No, 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 no. He, he's probably gonna watch me. I'm encouraging him to join you. So, and um, I don't know if you guys watch rugby, but a lot of the hakas are done, you know, before rugby games. And so yeah. So right now I'm gonna be performing a haka. I might. Screwed up a little bit, but um, I watched my grandparents' families. Right, right, exactly. Wow, it's amazing. No, I got uh, a few Polynesian uh, family in here, so. <laughs> um, all right, I gotta get into the zone because it's kind of tough. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Um, usually there is one person that leads the haka and that's going to be the leader, you know, who's in charge and what they say is Samoa, Saugi, Kakokau. Basically that means um, the Samoan, letting the Samoan people, are you guys ready like to go to battle? And um, the people will answer, they say Samoa, Saugi, Kakokau, Kakokau, Kakokau. And then they will say, e! and then um, it goes, Le Manu Samoa, Le O Fai Fai, Le Manu Samoa, Le O Fai Fai, Le Manu Samoa, Le O Fai Fai, Le Nai Si Si Tato Fai, Le Manu Samoa, Le Manu Samoa, Le Manu Samoa, E! So that's just a half version. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's just
just a, a small version of the haka, and um, it's it's like two minutes long, but that's just the general version of what they do. And um, basically, they're talking about um, the small people getting ready to go fight, and um, there's nobody that's going to be able to come and uh, take us and be able to like overpower whatever we got going on. And at the end of the day, we're going to fight and we will win. So yeah. And that is it, if you guys have any more questions. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Thank you, Michael. You're very welcome.